Hi, I'm Rick at Rick Turns, and today's video is... Well, this is the start of a, I think, multi-video series about making a cherry bow with uh, peg de decorations on it. And peg decorations is where I drill a series of holes into the side of the bow or the face of the bow, and then put in uh, different colored pegs there. Make some kind of a geometric arrangement or whatever. They usually turn out very, very nice. Now I've got a large piece of wood here. This is a large piece of cherry. We've got about 16 inches this way, 19 inches this way. So I am going to mark a circle here, between here and here. Let's see what I've got here, right about, right about 7 inches, I think. Let's see if that's going to do it. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, that's going to be around 14 right there, I think. Let's see what I got there. That's about a 14 inch diameter right there. I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and cut that out. All right, I am off the bandsaw, and uh, I've got uh, my 14 and one quarter inches blank here. Now this will be the top of the bowl. Down here is going to be the bottom of the bowl. Normally I would start out with this right up against the um, headstock, but this is very, very uneven. But, uh, as you can see right there, the the faceplate is not going to fit real steady and this is a really heavy piece of wood so what I'm going to do is go to a little bit of extra trouble here I've already marked the approximate center here I'm going to put the faceplate on here this is a nice smooth surface I chainsawed this just a couple of months ago uh, maybe a month ago I'm not sure so I'm going to put the faceplate right here and then I'll put it on I'll cut this side down here flat then I'll switch the faceplate back to that side come back to here start on the bow proper uh, and I'll be turning a recess for the chuck so I am going to drill a few pilot holes Got the face plate screwed on here and you can see that piece is way out of balance probably the main reason is there's a lot less wood right in this slope than there is right over in this slope not to mention we get more wood right down here I'll be turning all that away so I'm going to turn the speed down to zero turn the lathe on see uh, what I can get it up to that's about 250 that's about 450 whoop right above 450 lathe started moving around and this is a big heavy lathe so that is 450 and I'm gonna stop right there and start my turning right there until I get a little more in round at least. I'm all set to get started. Uh, we're going to get about 450 RPM. Got a 5 8 inch bowl gouge right here.
Not quite there yet. Still got a chainsaw mark right there to remove. is pretty good for attaching a face plate to it and I could go ahead and take down about that much to get rid of that crack there but I'm not I'm just I'm gonna leave that there uh, and then when I get to doing the top of the bow this is the top of the bow when I get back to that I'll probably cut away down to that crack I've changed the face plate to what will be the top of the bowl over here near the headstock. And uh, now I'm going to start just rounding it over and getting some kind of a general shape in place. I'm still at 450 RPM. I've gotten rid of most of this uh, slope of bark that was right there, a tiny bit left there. So now I'm going to finish uh, rounding it down. It's still rough over here and it's not quite uh, in balance yet. Alright, the bark's gone. Well, you can see a good bit of sapwood still showing up there. Now, if you recall, I put some long screws through the bottom here. They were about an inch and a half long, so I'm going to take this on down about an inch and then take it all off. mounting holes for the original face plate mount. I have the face plate here are not showing so I've cut them away. So now I am going to turn a recess for the chuck. Now for a chuck here I'm going to use my largest chuck. This is a stronghold, a one-way stronghold with 100 millimeter jaws on it about four inches and I have my dividers here set to that size right there. So this right here is the minimum size hole that I need. I actually need to cut it just a little bit larger than that. I'm going to go ahead and mark this. Now at about 650 right there. And that is my chuck mark right there. So now, got to cut that in some. I want to mark my center right there make sure I can find it when I've got the ball, bowl all turned and need to flip it over again. Okay, yeah, I made that too big, but uh, the jaws will still work. So now I can go ahead and, and really shape the bowl. I'm down to kind of the uh, minimum shape here in terms of getting it into round, getting rid of the bark, and uh, getting a mounting hole here. Uh, 
normally I wouldn't cut this down until uh, I remounted it in the chuck. But in this case, since I want to do some final shaping over here, not sure what it'll look like, going to cut this down right away. Just brought up the tailstock for a little bit of extra support. I'm going to be putting pressure on it this way. Back to this side of the bowl, work on it. I have taken the bowl off the lathe, removed the face plate from the top of the bowl, and I've Put it onto the chuck right here. Turn it pretty true. Yes, it is. Okay. And now I'm ready to start on the interior. All right, you can see that crack right there, which I'm removing. Still got a big chunk of wood here to remove. First thing I'm going to do, though, is true it up again because it's still a little bit out. And it also may be because it's a couple of days since I've been here and it's uh, warped a little bit. I don't really need to get it back in the round. This piece is still pretty green and it's still going to warp a lot as I dry it out. And I'm still getting some vibration at around a thousand. That's about as far as I want to go anyway with this size bowl. First thing about turning the inside is to remove this great big chuck here. It's got that big split in it. And I've got the lathe set at about a thousand RPM, so here we go. Got that huge hump removed. Now, what I want to do here, first of all, measure it. Might have still have 14 inches here. Nope, 13 and one quarter inches. So, if I'm going to leave the side thickness at 10% of that, that's one and a third inches. And Pencil here. And I'm going to mark this. Let's see. All right, there's one, one and a quarter, one and a half. So I'm going to make it about one and three eighths there. That's going to be the side thickness for drying. Ten percent of the overall diameter. All right, hollowing now. I think I'm going to start out with a large scraper. See how that does. Yeah, the scraper's really removing that wood fast. Uh, <coughs> it is leaving some grain tearing, but actually it doesn't matter too much in this case. This is a rough turn. It's got to go through drying, and I got to turn the whole thing uh, down to round and down to finished shape.
think I'd better check the depth. All right. Okay, definitely not there yet. Time for another depth deck. Check that. That's it. Now remember this is rough turning. Green bowl. So I'm leaving the bottom down here an inch and a third thick as well as the sides. So now I just got to check the slope of the sides. If at all possible, and it really should be possible, I want to get uh, the thickness on the sides even all the way down to the bottom. So I'm pretty good right to there. Yep. So I just need to narrow down, you know, maybe that little bit right there. And it'll be ready to dry. The rough out is finished on this. Uh, it wasn't that much material to remove since I've got to leave it one and a third inches thick. Uh, it now has to dry. Let me check the moisture content on this. In times past, I would check the... Uh, well, I didn't have a way of testing moisture content. Okay, that is uh, about 20 and one half percent. Let's just try it up here as well. 19.3 percent there. Right on the outside. 18 percent there. Uh, that's sort of consistent because this area was solid wood before and hadn't had any chance to dry out, whereas the outside has had a little bit of a chance to dry out. As I was about to say, in times past, without a moisture meter, what I would do is stick this in a drying box and every day I would weigh it. And when the weight loss from one day to the next hit three-tenths of an ounce, I would pronounce it dry sit it on my workbench for a day, it would gain maybe an ounce back, and uh, then it would be ready to go. Until I get a drying box built, this bowl's going in here, wrapped up in its own shavings. Now, as you probably know, a uh, paper bag is better for this. So I am going to use a plastic bag. That's not ideal because it doesn't allow any moisture out and you can get mold. But this is only going to be in here for a day or two. And there we have it. Take that. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm not going to worry about getting it too tight. I don't want it to get moldy or trap too much moisture in there. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, me and my bag of shavings are going to go build a uh, drying box. See you next video.